Welcome everyone. My name is Grant Luton. I'm uh, here in Northeast Ohio, and I want to welcome all of you to uh, this very special and holy day as we pray together around the world. This fast of Gedalia is uh, an unusual day that takes place during these 10 days of all. And we've set this aside this year as a time that we as mostly all Gentile believers and Yeshua as our Messiah and Savior to confess the sins of our ancestors. It's an odd thing that God not only permits, but encourages that the children confess the sins of their fathers and forefathers. We see Daniel doing this in chapter nine of the book of Daniel. And so we come together to acknowledge that so many Gentile believers, those who call themselves Christians, have shown so much hatred and persecution of the people of the word, the people of the land, the people of the covenant that God made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And though we hold up the Messiah of Israel, we have so many times rejected Israel. And though we claim to follow the scriptures, we've rejected the people through whom God gave us those scriptures. And so we just want to come together today to unite our hearts. And our Father and our King, we ask you to hear our plea as we humble ourselves. And we thank you, first of all, for rescuing us from a blindness that has been almost universal over the last 2,000 years and longer, a blindness that does not recognize the people of the book, the children of Abraham, the people of your holy covenant, through whom you have blessed this world and us in so many uncountable ways. So Father, we just ask you to forgive us, to deliver us from the curses and the consequences of, of so much sin that has taken place in the name of the sinless one. And Father, we take to heart the words of your holy apostle Paul as he wrote in Romans 11. And he tells us, I say then, they, the Jewish people, did not stumble so as to fall, did they? May it never be. But by their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make them jealous. Now, if their transgression is riches for the world, and their failure is riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their fulfillment be? For their rejection, that is, of the Messiah, is the reconciliation of the world. What will their acceptance, that is, of the Messiah, be but life from the dead? And our Father, we just thank you so much that in your great plan, in your sovereignty, in your unsearchable wisdom, you have seen fit to allow your people to not recognize their Messiah so that you might graciously include us and graft us into your people and that you would open wide a way for us to come into your presence and have deep and spiritual relationship with you that our lives might be transformed. The Father, we're so forgetful. We always talk about what our salvation has cost you, has cost your son. The Lord, our salvation has cost your people as well. They have suffered horribly so that we might be grafted in. Forgive us for our lack of gratitude, dear Lord. And have mercy upon us. And restore those who call themselves part of your church. Restore them. Restore all of us to a place of deep gratitude to your people. To your covenant. And to you, Father. 
where in such incredible wisdom, you've seen fit to include all of us in sin, that you might have grace upon all of us. So who are we to judge our brother? For in so many ways, the Jewish people have shown much greater faith in you than we ever have. So Lord, I pray you'd help us to follow the example of stalwart, unyielding faith in you. And they, may they come to recognize your son, Yeshua, as their Messiah, that they might apply that same unyielding and unwavering faith to their king. And Father, as we continue with Paul's words to us, he says, but if some of the branches were broken off, then you, the Gentiles, being a wild olive, were grafted in among them and became partaker with them of the rich root of the olive tree. Do not be arrogant toward the branches. But if you are arrogant, remember that it is not you who supports the root, but the root supports you. So Father, forgive us. Forgive us, our fathers, our forefathers for generations, for the arrogance that we have all demonstrated against your people. Who are we to look down our noses at them? The ones through whom you gave us the scriptures, the ones through whom you gave us the promises, the ones through whom you gave us the prophets the ones through whom you gave us our precious Messiah. Lord, I pray you would open blind eyes and deaf ears to receive what you speak to us so clearly and so plainly throughout your scriptures, that your people, the covenant people of Israel, are the apple of your eye. And your covenant with them, though they may have broken it, you still hold it dear and you will fulfill it. And we know that the day will come, and I pray it will be quickly and soon, that we will all embrace one another as the family of God. The Lord, as Jacob and Esau were twin brothers, they shared the same womb at the same time. And yet when they were born into this world, they were so opposite. And Esau and his children were constant persecutors of Jacob and his children. The Father, you give us a glimpse at that one moment when Jacob wrestled with you and won. And then when he encountered his brother Esau, they embraced face to face. Lord, may that picture be fulfilled in our lifetimes. When the one who wanted to destroy Jacob embraces him instead. So, Father, again, forgive us for our arrogance. Forgive us for our blindness and our deafness. For not looking deeply into the scriptures we so proudly proclaim as our own. And the Apostle Paul continues and says, quite right, they were broken off for their unbelief. Then you stand by your faith. Do not be conceited, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Behold the kindness and severity of God. The Father, we see this passage being fulfilled before our very eyes. We see so many Gentile assemblies and communities falling away. So many Gentile believers and leaders falling into sin. We see those who call themselves your church becoming lukewarm. Instead of being apart from the world, they compete with the world and they're losing. Father, we see churches dying, communities folding up. We see empty church buildings everywhere we go, buildings for sale. But once there was life 
and now there's darkness and emptiness. The Lord, we see the branches being sawn off because we've been proud and arrogant, because we have not humbled ourselves before you, our King, and we have not loved those whom you love. But we have been like Cain to our brother Abel. We have not been our brother's keeper. But in so many ways, we have been jealous of them instead of making them jealous of us. And Paul continues. They also, they do not continue in their unbelief, and I pray, God, that they will not, but they will come to you in growing numbers and in a, a, a great revival among your people. If they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. For if you were cut off from what is by nature a wild olive tree and were grafted contrary to nature, to a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these who are the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? For I do not want brethren to be uninformed of this secret, so that you will not be wise in your own estimation that a partial hardening has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved. Just as it is written, the deliverer will come from Zion. He will remove ungodliness from Jacob. This is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. Father, may this day come quickly and soon. And Lord, as we grieve the, the slow death of so many Gentile faith communities. May we rejoice in the revived life and vibrancy that we see among the Jewish people as in growing numbers they embrace their King. They embrace their Messiah, our Yeshua. So Father, thank you for the day in which we live, for, for allowing us to live in such a time as this. So, Father, hear our prayers today as we confess our sins and the sins of our forefathers. And we just ask you to bless your people, Israel. And may they, as one man, come to recognize their Messiah, Yeshua, as their own. Amen. And Daniel Lancaster, if you were with us, I'm going to turn it over to you. Would you please lead us in prayer? Thank you. Thank you, Grant. Our Father, our Father in heaven, sanctified be your name. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Abba, you ask us who has ascended to heaven and come down and who has gathered the wind in his fists and who has wrapped up the waters in a garment who has established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name? Surely you know. On behalf of those who have come before us, on behalf of those who are with us, and on behalf of all those who call themselves by the name of our master, we come before you with tears and contrition with broken hearts. Every word of God proves true. He is a shield to those who take refuge in him. Remove far from us falsehood and lying. You have revealed to infants what you have hidden from the wise. We are the end of a long line, a long chain that stretches back 2000 years, the end of a process and no more worthy than any who have ever gone before us. 
If our eyes have seen and our ears have heard what many prophets and righteous men longed to see but did not see and to hear but did not hear, it's by no merit or virtue of our own. We are the ones who have thrown Joseph into the pit. But thine is the kingdom. We ask that you would remove the disguise from Joseph, that every eye should see him. Remove the thick covering over our hearts, over the hearts of our brothers and our sisters and all who call ourselves by his name. We've turned away from following after him, the one who has the words of life. We've tossed the son of David and his people, all of the people of his court into the cistern into which Ishmael had thrown all the bodies of the men he had struck down along with Gedaliah. We have brutalized your covenant people. We've besmirched the name of your son. We've blasphemed his name. We've We've committed the great Chalul Hashem, the desecration of your name. What should have been for light, we've turned to darkness. What should have been for revelation, we've turned to ignorance. We've cast our allegiance, we thought, with the Messiah, and we cast our allegiance with the man of destruction. We declared the end of your law, every jot and tittle in his name. Master, Master, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? But behold, we have built our house on sand. And now the rains are falling and the floods are rising and the winds beat against us. Great will be our fall. For we are the type of people who hear your word, but don't do it. We are salt without saltiness. We're no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under people's feet. We have hidden your lamp beneath a basket. We have cast the shadow of our darkness before men. We have abolished your Torah, broken your commandments from the least to the greatest and taught others to do so as well. Our hypocrisy has exceeded that of the hypocrites, and we are no longer worthy to enter your kingdom. We have harbored anger and hatred in our hearts. We have murdered with our tongues. We have reviled with our words. We have insulted and maligned. We have made ourselves worthy of punishment in this life and punishment in the fire of Gehenna. We have refused to reconcile. We have offered the sacrifice of fools at your altar. And now our accuser has risen against us and he hands us over to the judge. Please forgive this foolish people and do not deliver us to the warden or throw us into the prison. We've committed every form of adultery it would have been better for us to lose the members of our body, both the right eye and the left eye, both the right hand and the left hand, than to lift them against your people, than to suffer in the fire of Gehenna. We've covered your, your altar with tears and with weeping and groaning of your people. We've sworn falsely, We've not kept our vows. We've taken foolish oaths. Though we cannot turn one hair on our head, white or black, we've, we've sworn vengeance and retaliation in the name of your son against those who have not offended us. We fought for both tunic and cloak and refused to go even one mile. We've turned away from those who begged of us. We've refused to lend compassion to those who asked to borrow it. We've loved those that love us and greeted only our brothers. 
and yet we've turned against the brothers of the one we claim to serve. We've returned good with evil. We have hated and cursed. Rather than praying for persecutors, we have called those who did not persecute our persecutors and we have persecuted them. We've proven by all these measures that we are not worthy to be called your sons. We've given charity to be praised by men. We've prayed to be heard by men. We have fasted to be seen by men. We've asked you for forgiveness while refusing to forgive those who have sinned against us. And we have laid up for ourselves treasures on earth. And that's where our hearts are also. We've been miserly. And great is the darkness that is within us. We've served two masters, hating God and loving money. We've spent all of our days in anxiety, asking what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? And though our worries and our concerns for the things of this world have not added a single hour to the span of our lives, anxiety consumes us because we are a people without faith. We judge others with harsh measure. We, we focus on the speck in our brother's eyes. We did not notice the log that is in our own eye. We took what is holy and we threw it to dogs. We threw your wisdom to the pigs. None among us asked, none sought you, none knocked on your gates. We've done unto others what they have not done unto us. And we've turned away from your Torah and the words of your prophets. Because we are those who enter by the gate that is wide and the way that leads to destruction. We are false prophets. We are ravenous wolves in sheep's clothing. By our fruits, we are known. Merciful Father, we've taken our inheritance to a far country and squandered our wealth in reckless living. And now we are hungry and thirsty and not satiated. There is a famine in the land. It's not a famine of bread or thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Should your sons and daughters, those called by your name, slop among the swine? Should we long for the pods thrown to the pigs? Though your righteous ones have more than enough bread, we perish with hunger here. Lord, may we arise, return to our Father, and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and we are no longer worthy to be called your sons. Treat us as, as your hired servants. Our Father in heaven, though we are yet far off, may you look upon us again and feel compassion. May you come out and meet us and embrace us. Kiss us with the kisses of your mouth. Your love is better than wine. Draw us after you. Remove our filthy garments. Say to us, behold, I've taken your iniquity away from you. I will clothe you in pure vestments. Make us like a signet ring, as shoes for our feet. Put on us the readiness of the gospel of peace, as shoes for our feet. Provide for yourself the sacrifice and set the table before us. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of your son, how much more now that we are reconciled shall we say, be saved by his life? May we hear you say this child of mine was dead, but now he is alive. May it be your will that we live again. We were straying like sheep. But now we have returned to the shepherd and overseer of our souls. Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. 
We are no longer worthy to be called your son. We were dead, but now we live. We were lost, but now we are found. Lift the veil and bring the revelation. As water covers the earth, so may the knowledge of God. We lay it before you in the name of those who have come before us those who are with us here today and those who are not with us here today all those who call themselves by the name of your son we lay it before you lord what can we say what excuse can we offer what justification can we make it's such a shame, a shame shameful for us to lift our eyes we leave these things before you in the merit and virtue of our holy master. Thank you so much, Daniel. And Steve Meeks, if you are with us. Oh, I see Rabbi Morris from Ukraine, I'm sorry. Rabbi Boris, are you with us? Rabbi Boris, are you there? Yes. Uh, yes, sir. Would you please lead us in prayer this time? Thank you. Father, we thank you for restoration that began. Restoration of the body of your son and restoration of uh, a remnant of Israel. We thank you for this time when you gave us great blessing to live. We can see signs of last times. We can see beginning of this restoration. And we so thankful for everything you promised everything what already fulfilled everything just began to fulfill and everything will be fulfilled the special days dear papa dear abba we ask you break stronghold of rejection your people stronghold of the pride many centuries pride in christian hearts break the strongholds and break strongholds of rejection strong stronghold of bitterness stronghold of deep sorrow in jewish hearts we ask you Use us as a bridge between your chosen Israel and your beloved church.
help, please help your kids, your children worldwide to open Bible new way, open scripture like you gave the scripture. Read the scripture as a living letter from dear, dear Papa. Scripture where Israel were Jewish family, so clear, so understandable, so and discussing. Please help all, all believers. Territory of former Soviet Union, especially Russian speaking world, Eastern Europe, whole Europe, especially. Open their eyes, their hearts for simple truth about your eternal love. How it's written in Romans, how it's written in many other scriptures of New Testament and Tanakh. We ask you only your grace can break this curtain. The same way only your grace can break curtain and close spiritual eyes of our Jewish brothers. The same way only you, through your son, by power of Holy Spirit, can break the curtain on eyes of Christian. We need real tshuva, not another feeling of hopelessness, but a real tshuva, a real awakening. We need this tshuva, we need this turning from lie oh, many, many centuries. We need new, but at the same time, old, original understanding your living words. Help us and encourage all who already ministering to the body about for this restoration and ministering toward Jewish people for their restoration. Encourage, strengthen, and give real joy of real repentance. Deep joy after deep chua. We thank you so, so much for your answers that already happened and more answers, more responses. We already pretest. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you. And Steve, are you there? Yes. Would you please lead us in prayer? Thank you. Our Father in heaven, thank you 
that you receive us today. Uh, despite our sins, despite our failings in the things that we're coming to confess, you are eager to hear us and willing to receive us. And we are deeply grateful that you have not treated us according to what our sins measure is, but you have shown grace and mercy and helped us and uh, are ready to hear us today. There are things that we are saying to you, Father, that need to be said because they are true. Uh, they are from our hearts, and it's time for us to, to take time to deal with them. And um, so thank you for listening to us as we paused for a short time with one another to, to deal with the business that needed to be dealt with long ago. Um, uh, as a as a Gentile that before you, recognizing my position as being one so blessed as to be included with your people, but um, born uh, as not your people, I'm grateful, Father, Father, that you let me call you Father, and that you truly receive me and those like me as as your children, your dearly and beloved and adored children. So thank you for doing that. And yet we have, through ignorance sometimes, most of the time perhaps, but also through intent, we have tried to displace your natural born children. And this has been wrong for us to do. Um, we have defamed your Torah. Um, we have dismissed your Moedim. We've displaced your Shabbat, distanced ourselves from your people. And we've done all of this um, claiming a special place with you, claiming a special unity or union with you. Um, and in this, we have been deceived and we have become the deceivers. We've perpetuated the lie. We have been literally the blind leading the blind. Um, and today we are admitting that on behalf of ourselves personally, but also on behalf of those who stand with us in agreement that we did this um, and it was wrong. And we apologize to you. We ask your forgiveness and we repent of doing this and things like this. Um, our trespass, our trespass was real. We were ignorant, but we are not innocent, and we need your forgiveness. And this is our request today, is that you would extend that great forgiveness, not only to us individually who are listening and talking today, but to all those who, who fit the bill, who, who agree with this in heart and also know that they have sinned. Um, and in doing this, we're, we're asking you on behalf of your, your beloved people of Israel that you will supersede, that you will step over the stumbling stone that we have become and the ones that we've laid in front of people. And we ask you, Father, would you go to them? Would you go to your people today? And would you begin and continue the work that you've begun? But would you increase the work that you've done? in removing the stumbling blocks out of the way so that they might see you, they might come to you, they might embrace you, they might know your Yeshua as their Messiah. And, and that that delay or that lag or that distance that we have placed in there would be removed and a clear runway, a, a level highway the mountains brought low the valleys brought up and a level highway be constructed for the king that your people your people your jewish people that they might clearly get it see you love you embrace you and that you may hold all your children the natural born and those grafted in those adopted that you may hold them all with both arms so that you're, you will be blessed, so that you will have the things that you have wanted since before the foundation of the world, that you might be 
a joy-filled father with all your children home. This is our prayer. Forgive us for having delayed this reunion. And um, please no longer hold it against us. But show us how we might join in making amends. That we might somehow open the doors and uh, be, participate in holding them open. So that you and your, your sons and daughters can be fully embracing one another. So Father, bring your children home, all of them. And forgive us at this time. We have sinned. And we do not want to continue doing that. So may you go beyond and above our sins and fulfill your will. And this is our prayer to you now. And we do it by the permission, according to the, the character and the will and the ways of Yeshua, our beloved. And amen. Thank you, Steve. And Rabbi Mary Show, are you here? Sure, I am. Thank Listen you. Please continue to lead us in prayer. Thank you. Avinu Malkinu, our Father, our King. The precious merit of your Son, we approach your throne of grace. Thanking you so much for so great salvation and eternal redemption in your son. Thank you, Father, for the precious blood of the Lamb that has washed us and continued to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. This confidence we have, for we draw near to you in his name. And so, Father, at this time, these days of all, we humble ourselves before you and we thank you that out of your goodness, you have granted us the shuva, that we may enter into your righteousness, peace and joy. Father, we hear the voice of the shofar, and you come to us and you say to each of us, Aika, where are you? And where is your brother? And what can we say before you, Father? For our hands are covered with blood. Yet rather than hiding behind trees, put it on fig leaves, we run to you, Father, and say, we have sinned. We have fallen short of your glory. We have caused wickedness. We have become guilty. We have betrayed. We have robbed. We have spoken slander. We have given evil counsel. We have misrepresented, we have provoked, we have turned your people away. We have shut up the kingdom of heaven from your children. These things we have done all the while thinking that we're doing you service. But now, Father, our hearts are broken, a broken and contrite spirit you grant to us. And we pray, oh, Father, that you would take note of us in this season at this time. And as our cries are sent to you, Father, we would hear your cry and longing meeting us. We pray in the merit of your Son, O oh God, that you would help us to contend earnestly for that faith that was once delivered, that you would help us to stand in defense of the gospel. We know that your Son would have been preached, O oh Lord our God, some in, in ill will and some in good. And we have rejoiced that he has been proclaimed, but now we recognize you desire him to be proclaimed in truth. And so, Father and King, in the name of Yeshua, we humble ourselves before you. And we pray, O oh God, that you would turn us back. And in our turning, O oh God, let our light so shine so that those who name the name of Messiah may recognize what is happening in and among us. Let this day create no small stir in the air, hearing of the Jewish people and of Christians. Cause it to be known, O oh God, that whereas 10 persons would have been with Ishmael to kill and murder uh, Gadaliah, that a representative, this, this minion, coming back again, Father. We are the 10 men from the nations taking hold of the zizit of your son, and whereas we took hold of him to, to, to crucify him, now we are taking hold of his zizit and saying, we are going with you, Emmanuel, our father and our king. 
Forgive us for misrepresenting your son, not recognizing him in the shadow of Yosef, not recognizing him in the shadow of Samson, not recognizing him in the shadow of Daniel. In this Gentile context, oh God, we have misrepresented. But, oh Lord God, we thank you that in your kindness you open our eyes and now you are entrusting to us the ministry of reconciliation. And so, our Father and our King, we recognize that we have indeed misrepresented through caricatures, through vilification of the Jewish people, and indeed through systematic and unrelenting acts of violence and murder against your Jewish people, Father, against the Jewish community. We recognize our connection with the historical church. We recognize, Father. And today, in the true spirit of confession and repentance, we acknowledge, we confess, we renounce, and we turn from the sins against your people. In the spirit of Ezra and Daniel, Father, we are ashamed to lift up our faces because our guilt has ascended to heaven. Yet, oh God, there is forgiveness with you that you may be feared. So we confess all the judophobia, all the anti-Judaism, all, all the anti-Semitism. We, we confess the, the, the silence and the absence of protest against others who have so abused your people. Father, we renounce this day in the power of your son and turn from conscious and subconscious sins of judophobia and, and anti-Semitism and, and, and replacement theology and supersessionism. Father, like Samson, who we misrepresented, plucked out his eyes, Lord, cut off his hair that he, he was not even able to be recognized as Jewish to the Philistines. But Lord, we recognize that we live in a day when that hair is growing again. And we pray, oh God, that you would avenge for your great name's sake the blood of your son. Take hold of those two pillars of replacement theology and supersessionism and bring down the house in the name of Yeshua. Let that 3,000 God be connected to that 3,000 that, that, that perished in Exodus and the 3,000 that were saved on the day of Shavuot. Let us see, oh God, that you are causing us to die with our masters so that we could be born again to life. And so our Father and our King, let us not be last in bringing the King back home as David was coming back home, oh God. Let us not be numbered among those who are last in bringing the King back to his house. Let us not be silent about bringing the King back, our Father, our King. We go out, O oh Lord, and we pray in the merit of your Son that you would help us. Help us, O oh God, to be able to, to, to make that bridge of hope and reconciliation. So that together your, your, the, the nail pierced hands of your son could extend to the Jewish people and, and to the Kahal and bring us back as one into your heart. Make that one new humanity be a reality, O oh God. And so this day, Father, as your children, we humble ourselves. We tremble before you, our Father and our King, and we ask you to take note, O oh Father, of this day. Thank you that you have given us the courage to pray. Now, Father, use us mightily, O oh God. This little opening, this little opening, that eye of the need, Lord, open it mightily so that chariot could come through. Let this be a day of, of real teshuva. Let this Shabbat, this, 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 this shuva be, 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 be different than all other Shabbats, Lord. Let this be a genuine Shabbat shuva, O oh God, that, that your people would hear. That just as, as the Jewish people would have heard what Nebuchadnezzar would have done in appointing Gedaliah, that the Jewish people would hear that among the nations, oh God, we are restoring the correct image of your son, that we have misrepresented him as a false prophet and a false messiah. But now, oh God, we come forward, oh God, to defend the image uh, 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 and right the wrong, to, to, to bring forth a retrial in the name of Yeshua so that the Jewish people and the nation would recognize, oh God, the grievous error and the sin that we have made. But now, Father, we humble ourselves and say, we have sinned. And we take responsibility. And we want to do what we can, Father, to right the wrongs. What little way we can, Father, help us to be able to do it. So thank you for this time. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this precious opportunity to weep before you, Father. To hear the hearts and cries of your children as we confess our sins. And as we turn and pray that you would grant Teshuvah, 
oh God, so that the Jewish people could finally recognize their beloved son. Lord, let there be a, a holy hush, as it were. You, you put out all, all the Gentiles so that Joseph could make himself known to his people. Lord, let there be a holy hush so that the arrogance of the years will be silent as you make yourself known to your people. We pray for this reconciliation. And we pray, oh God, that we will be helpers of the joy of your people. Whereas we would have wounded, oh God, help us now, oh God, to pour in the oil and the wine. Help us to love our neighbors ourselves, for they are our brethren. We are brethren. Let there no longer be any strife. So, Father, heal us. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Give our Jewish brothers the grace to forgive us. Open their hearts to be able to consider. Lord, you said after two years you would revive us. We are declaring, oh Father, that we are in that season of that third year and you are reviving us in a way that we could never have thought possible before. And we thank you that we are alive to see such a time as this coming to pass. Revive us, oh God, in wrath. Remember mercy and revive us in the midst of the days. But the things that are unseen are eternal and we know the end of the book. So we keep our eyes on the unseen and we declare that which you have ordained by the hands of the prophets is coming to pass in all days swiftly and soon. And we thank you that our eyes would see it. So Father, may your Shekinah be restored to Zion. And may healing be restored to, to the church. Our brothers and sisters who meant well but have done wrong. And we pray that there would be a great repentance among all of your people on this day, that we may live before you, Father. And we pray even among the house of Ishmael, oh God, the, 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 the natural descendants of Ishmael today, that they would hear of this and turn and recognize their arrogance and ignorance. And that Isaac and Ishmael would come to bury Abraham again. Lord, we pray for this restoration on so many levels. So we lay our hearts before you. Do as only you can do, Father. Forgive us for we have heard. Pardon us for we have transgressed. Grant us a great teshuva. And let the son of David be exalted again in his rightful place. Rule over your people, Israel. We declare this day you have become our king, O oh Lord and our God. We thank you for hearing the voice of the shofar. We thank you that it's coming closer and closer and louder and louder. And we tremble. Now, Father, restore your great name for your great name's sake. Magnify your name. Unto you give glory. Your name is great and great to be praised. And whereas we have heard, we know that you are faithful still. And you can do exceedingly abundant. The years that the locusts would have eaten, you could restore in a twinkling of an eye. We believe, oh God, that you begin with the impossible and go on from there. So, Father, we say grace, grace to these mountains. It shall become a plain. Thank you for doing it. And thank you for helping us to be fellow workers together with you. To do our little part. Take note, our Father, and help us. Continue to open our lips that our mouth may declare your praise. And continue to help us to live in such a way that your people could see this sign and a wonder. That they need to see and recognize Yeshua as their Messiah, the son of David. And so today we say, we are yours, King Yeshua. We are with you, son of David. God who helps you, we are with you. We receive you, our King. And we pave the way, oh God, removing the stones so that many more could receive and recognize King Messiah. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for permitting us to speak. Thank you for giving us opportunity to speak. Now consider our request, Father, and do exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or imagine in the merit and virtue of the Jewish King, Yeshua of Nazareth, King Messiah. Amen. Be. Amen. Thank you, Rabbi. And Nathan, are you with us? Bless you, yes, thank you. Thank you. Would you please continue to lead us in prayer? Amen.
Father, Father, we humbly come before you during these days of awe. As we seek your face in prayer and repentance. Father, we humbly come before you and ask for forgiveness for what we have done in portraying Messiah as a Gentile and opposed to the Torah. Father, forgive us for not believing Messiah who said himself, do not think that I have come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For truly, I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the Torah until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commandments and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commandments will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the Torah, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Father, forgive us for putting a stumbling block before our brothers. Father, we ask for forgiveness for believing a false report, which states that Messiah would do away with the Torah, just to be reading Acts 6. And Father, in doing so, we have not shown ourselves approved. We have not shown we love you. Father, forgive us for rejecting your loving instructions, your precepts, your statutes which have a blessing and a witness to your mercy. Father, forgive us for accepting the lies that believe your Torah is not righteous. Father, forgive us for our lawlessness through rejecting and showing partiality to your Torah. And Father, forgive us for portraying Messiah as a lawless Messiah and therefore representing Yeshua as not being the prophet like Moses. Father, forgive us, for in our misrepresentation of Messiah, we have misled the Jewish people and not presented them with the true image of Messiah Yeshua. For Yeshua is the one who gave the Torah. He is the word who became flesh and saviour of humanity and redeemer of creation. Father, we declare that Messiah is the true and only Messiah of Israel. Father, we declare that Messiah is the judge, the lawgiver, the king and the saviour of Israel. Just as Isaiah wrote, for the Lord is our judge, the Lord is our lawgiver, the Lord is our king. It is he who will save us. Father, we declare that Messiah, when he returns, he will be the king over the earth. And on that day, your name will be one, just as the prophet Zechariah stated. And the Lord shall be king over all the earth. In that day, there shall be one Lord and his name one. Father, during these days of all, we come before your throne. As we petition you for the peace of Jerusalem, which in doing so, we seek the return of our Messiah, the King of not only Israel, but the earth. Father, we are asking for Messiah to come and rebuild the fallen tabernacle of David to unite the two houses, the house of Judah and the house of Israel, so that they can be one kingdom in the hand of the Messiah, just as Ezekiel prophesied. So, Father, just as Ezekiel said to the dry bones, we stand in the gap and declare, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Father, we declare life and breath to come from the four winds and breathe into the slain that they may live. This is what the sovereign Lord says, my people. I'm going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Well, then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord. When I open your graves and bring you up from them, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, 
the Lord have spoken and I have done it, declares the Lord. Father, we declare that you will gather the house of Israel and the house of Judah from amongst the nations and bring them back into their own land, that you will make them one nation in the land on the mountains of Israel and that Yeshua will be their king over them and they will never be divided again. They will no longer only defile themselves with the idols and vile images or with any of their offenses for you will save them from their backsliding and you will cleanse them for the house of Israel and the house of Judah will be your people and you will be their God. Father, you declared to the prophet Jeremiah that you would gather the remnant of your flock out of all the countries where you have driven them and you will bring them back to their pastures where they will be fruitful and increasing number that you will place shepherds over them who would tend to them and they will no longer be afraid or terrified. Nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. Father, you declare that the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I'll rise up for David, a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live safely. This is the name by which you'll be called the Lord, our righteous Saviour. So then the days are coming, declares the Lord, when people will no longer say, as surely as the Lord lives. He brought the Israelites up out of Egypt, but they will say, as surely as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of Israel up out of the land of the north and out of the countries where he had banished them. Then they will live in their own land. Father, your people are scattered because they have turned away from your Torah. Father, we are in the state we are in today because we have turned away from your precepts, from your loving instructions. Father, the church is in the state today because it rejects them in part and shows partiality. Father, forgive me. Father, forgive us for when we have done so. And Father, forgive us for not showing your grace and mercy. Father, we need you to move, for we can do nothing. Father, we ask that you would mobilize and equip the messianic fellowships around the world for an influx of people searching for the truth of your word and for salvation through Messiah in the days ahead. Father, may we be ready. Father, may we be equipped. Father, may we stand firm and hold fast to the truth. And Father, may we not be afraid, afraid of the gospel of the kingdom, but help us, Father, to seek your kingdom and to seek your righteousness. And then you will do the rest. Father, we ask that you will raise up messianic leaders who will be zealous for your word as they graciously stand and defend your truth against false teachers. Father, forgive us when we have allowed false teaching into the body. Father, forgive us. Forgive me, Father, when we have listened to it and accepted it. But, Father God, we stand this day united and resolute, saying, all we want is your truth. All we want, Father, is you. And, Father, that we love you. Father, we ask that you strengthen believers at this time that they would stand firm and hold fast as they endure the days we live and would not return to Egypt as our ancestors did. They would not look to this world for substance, for help, for support. But, Father, we would look to you. Father, forgive us when we try to do things in our own strength. Father, forgive us when we have not looked to you and helped and help us to put our complete trust in you as we look through the eyes of faith rather than those of flesh. Help us, Father, not to be arrogant and proud when we especially look at Judah, Father, or when we look at the church. Father God, help us to show grace and mercy, but help us to show truth and wisdom and discernment. Father, we ask for you to speedily send our Messiah to bring restoration and deliverance in these days. Father, help us. Father, heal us. Father, forgive us. Father, mend the rift between Judah 
and Ephraim. And move, Father God, I pray. Father, we look to you for everything. Because in our own strength, we cannot stand and be victorious. However, we thank you and we declare that we can be victorious in these days as we overcome through the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony, and not shrinking from death. Father, we thank you and declare you are faithful and you will fulfill your word, not because of our righteousness, but because you're you are holy and because of your holy name. So, Father, we declare you are holy and your name is holy and you are righteous. And, Father, we ask these prayers in the name of your Son and our Messiah, Yeshua. Amen and amen. Thank you, Nathan. And, uh, Eric, I don't think, is with us. Eric, are you there? Or well, Roger, are you with us? Yes, uh, yes I am. Yes, thanks. Uh, Roger, would you please continue to listen to Eric? Hallelujah. Well, in this season, Jews, uh, including myself, throughout the world, recite the Slichot, uh, penitential prayers, uh, beginning with a note of joy and adoration for a God who loves us, with an everlasting uh, love known as the Ashray, uh, mainly from Psalm 145, focusing on worshipping God for who he is, faithful and true and worthy of all our praise. So I want to begin um, with this and then follow it by praying specifically uh, for Israel and the, Jew and the Jewish people as we yearn for them to be reconciled to God through embracing uh, our Jewish Messiah. Father of Enum of Canaan, Happy are those who dwell in your house, for they will forever praise you. Happy the people whose portion is this. Happy the people for whom their Lord and Saviour, Yeshua, is their God. I shall exalt you, my Lord, sovereign God. And every day and forever, I shall bless your name. Great is the Lord and exceedingly praised. His greatness is unfathomable. Generation to generation shall praise your actions and recount your mighty deeds. I shall speak of the brilliance of your splendid glory and the wonders of your acts, and I shall tell of your greatness. We shall forever remember your abundant goodness and joyfully proclaim your righteousness. You are so gracious and merciful, slow to anger and great in kindness. Your goodness and compassion extend to everyone within your creation. All those who love you shall worship you in spirit and in truth. They shall speak of your glory and talk of your mighty deeds made known to all flesh through Yeshua our Messiah, whose reign extends through every generation. You support all those who fall and hold all those who are bent over in your loving arms. The eyes of all look hopefully and confidently towards you and you give them their food in its proper time. Lord, you are you're righteous in every way and everything you do is perfect and virtuous. You are close to all who call, to all who seek you. And you fill the desires of all who delight in you. Lord, you says, Lord, that those who delight in you shall give the desires of their hearts. So our lips shall praise you, Lord, and all flesh will praise your holy name forever and ever. And now, as we stand proxy for Israel and the Jewish people, we acknowledge that you, O oh God, are righteous and we have been made righteous through your precious blood. What can we say or, or declare but that you would search our hearts, try us and know our thoughts for your arm is outstretched to all those who repent and turn away from their sins and seek your face. Through your mercy, we have come before you like the poor and destitute. We knock on your door for you are a God who is merciful and gracious and will never Turn us away empty-handed. Forgive us, our Father, 
Whenever in the abundance of our folly we have erred, pardon us, sovereign Lord, for we are but flesh and our iniquities are many. Lord, we pour out our hearts in prayer and supplications. We confess that we have despised your paths and rather pursued visions of uselessness and deception. We have rebelled against you and obstinately made our necks stiff and our faces brazen. We failed to listen to you and strayed from your ways. And so you drove us into exile where we were slain and slaughtered. We have survived as a people who were few among thorns that were cut without finding relief. And those who enslaved us and bowed down to idols have risen against you and speak blasphemy. You who are holy, behold the shame of those who sigh, who depend on you, and who to you are stitched together by the awesome deeds of your right hand. May you redeem us, for upon your abundant mercy alone do we put our trust. Open our eyes to behold your glory, the glory of your only begotten Son, for your name's sake and in your abundant mercy. Lord, we thirst for your righteousness and forgiveness as our tears are dried up and we are in an anguish of soul as we cry out to you day and night until you incline your ear and have mercy, O oh Lord, for your salvation we await. You are the sovereign Lord who has loved righteousness since the dawn of time. You judge the iniquities of your covenant people, but you never forsake them. And you reward those who revere you to all who place their trust in you through Yeshua, Amashia. Your paths are pleasant to us and all your ways are compassionate and gracious, leading to abundant life. You are slow to anger and abundant in kindness and full of mercy. May you open your eyes to behold, Lord, your glory and, um, and embrace the one who was pierced for our sins. Open our eyes, O oh Lord. You have revealed us to us the way of Teshuvah through the one who is the way and the truth and the life. And we acknowledge your faithfulness from generation to generation to all who revere your name and walk in your way. And so, Lord, as we stand in the gap for Israel and the Jewish people, turn to us in your mercy and forgive us as we cry out to you. As written in your Torah, in the shadow of your wings, may we find shelter and dwell as on the day when you descended in a cloud with the Shekinah glory. We confess that we have missed the mark, that we have sinned against you, and we earnestly seek your forgiveness. Remember the covenant which you made with our fathers, saying that you would remember your covenant with Jacob and also your covenant with Isaac and also your covenant with Abraham. And did you not promise that even when we were in exile, you did not despise nor abhor us to destroy or annul your covenant with us. And so we thank you. We thank you for your promise that when we search you with all our heart and soul and strength and circumcise our hearts, you will be found. As it is written, the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your offspring to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul so that you may live. So may you, Lord, pour out upon us water that is pure, purify us. For have you not said, I shall pour upon you water that is pure and you will become pure from all your contaminations and from all your abominations, I will purify you. Wipe away our misdeeds like a mist and like a cloud. For it is written, I have wiped away like a mist your willful misdeeds and like a cloud your transgressions. Return to me, for I have redeemed you. Remember your mercies, Lord, and your kindnesses, for they are for eternity. 
Do not forget your love of Zion. You will arise and show mercy to Zion for the time to favor her. The appointed time is near. Remember for Abraham, for Isaac and for Israel, your servants, that you swore by them, by your being. And you said to them, I shall increase your offspring like the stars of the heavens and all of this land of which I spoke, I will give to your offspring and they will inherit it forever. Remember your servants and forgive the stubbornness of your covenant people for their rebellion and misdeeds. For have, we have all sinned and we have all fallen short of your glory. Forgive us, our God. Remember the covenant with our fathers where you pledged, I will remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham. I will remember and the land I will remember. And so too remember the covenant with the Israelites where you promised, I will remember my covenant with my people who I took out from the land of Egypt in the very sight of the nations to be um, to them God, because I am the Lord. And despite all this, when they will be in the land of the enemies, I will not despise them, nor abhor them to destroy them, to annul my covenant with them, for I am the Lord your God. Wipe away our misdeeds for your name's sake, for we long again to hear your voice proclaim. I alone am the one who wipes away your sins for my sake and your transgressions. I shall not recall. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord, for though your sins be like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red as crimson, they will become whiter than white. Have mercy on us. Do not destroy us. For a merciful almighty God is the Lord who will not relinquish nor destroy nor forget the covenant with our ancestors, which you swore to them. Gather your dispersed ones who are strayed for. Have you not said even those in exile will be as far as the very ends of the heavens? The Lord, your God, will gather us in and from there he will take us. So bring us back to you, for we are estranged. Have mercy on us, for the time is soon coming when you will once again gather us from all the peoples that scattered us from the four corners of the earth. And so bring us again to your holy mountain and make us rejoice in your house of prayer. For have you not said, I'll bring them to my holy mountain and I'll make them rejoice in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their feast offerings will find favor upon my altar. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. Return us to you, Lord, and renew our days as of old. Do not cast us away from your presence, but restore to us your Ruach HaKodesh, your Holy Spirit. Display for us a sign for good so that our enemies may see it and be ashamed, for you alone are our help. And unto you do we wait, and unto you do we place our hope, you who are our rock and our believer. Our oh Lord, as believers in Yeshua, we have complete assurance of your forgiveness as we've confessed our sins and turn away from them for Lord, your promises are faithful and true. And so we stand for Israel and the Jewish people that they might likewise have their hearts opened to receive the one who can cleanse from all sin and restore us with a righteousness, not our own. And so as we say the 13 attributes of God, Father in heaven, Avina Bashamayim, who sits upon the throne of mercy, Al-Kisei who acts with kindness, 
Mochel Avonot Amo, who pardons the negative deeds of your people and removes them one by one. Ma'avir Rishon Rishon, who abundantly pardons those who sin. Ma'be Mechima the Chataim, and forgiveness to transgressors. Uslicha Lefoshim who performs acts of generosity or say Sadakotim with all beings of flesh and spirit called Basava Ruach. Not in accordance with their wickedness do you repay them. Lokra Atam Tigmol. Remember for us today the covenant you made known to Moshe in ancient times, as it is written, Zacholanu Hayom Brit Shekatuv. And the Lord descended in a cloud by Yared Adonai, by Anan, by Yikra, by Shem Adonai, and called out with the name of Adonai. And Adonai passed before Moshe's face and proclaimed, My God, Eli, merciful, Rachum, gracious, Vechanun, slow to anger, Erech and abundant in kindness, Varav Chesed, and truth, the Emet, preserving Kindness, not say chesed, for thousands of generations, le'alafim, pardoning iniquity, no say avon, and transgression, ve'pesha, and sin, ve'chata'a, and who cleanses, ve'nake. May, Lord, you forgive our iniquities and our wrongdoings, and make us your heritage, ve'salachta la'avotenu, Guardian of Israel, safeguard the remnant of Israel, and let not Israel be destroyed. Shamo Sherit Yisrael Val Yavad Yisrael. Exalted and sanctified be your great name. Yit Gadal ve Yit Kadesh Shemei Rabbah. And may the one who makes peace in the heavens, may he make, make peace upon us and upon all Israel and upon all the world. And let us say, Amen. O say shalom bim rumav hu ya say shalom aleinu ve'al kol yisra el ve'al kol ha'olam ve'imru. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Roger. And I'm told that someone has just joined us by phone. Is that you, Rabbi Eric? If it is, would you please unmute and join us? Okay, that may not be Rabbi Eric. So Gary Preston, are you with us? I am, thank you, Grant. Thank you, Gary. So as we take this opportunity to come before Hashem on this Zom Gedalia, Father, just thank you that you encourage us through your word. As it says in the book of Hebrews, therefore lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weak knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone and for the holiness without which one, without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fails to obtain the grace of God, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many become defiled. Our Father, our King, here in the United Kingdom, the seat of the Protestant Church, the defiers of the Catholic Church, we have stood in great pride in our heritage of what we have brought into the world. And yet, when we look at your scriptures, when we look in the book of Deuteronomy, the warning that you gave to your children, 
You know how we lived in the land of Egypt and how we came through the midst of the nations through which you passed. And you have seen their detestable things and idols of wood and stone, of silver and gold, which were among them. Beware lest there be among you a man or woman or clan or tribe whose heart is turning away today from the Lord our God to go and serve the gods of those nations. Beware lest there be among you a root bearing bitterness and poisonous fruit. One who, when he hears the words of the sworn covenant, blesses himself in his heart, saying, I shall be safe, though I walk in the stubbornness of my heart. This will lead to the sweeping away of moist and dry alike. Our Father, our King, in seeking to connect people to Yeshua, your Messiah, your Son, our Messiah, our King. The Gentile nations have created a false idol. And we've led your people into idolatry, similar to the northern kingdoms who under Jeroboam created the golden calves and the alternative festivals. And when that was presented, when that was presented before you, the response, the response to Jeremiah by those who you had brought through the destruction of Jerusalem, the response by those who you rescued from the hands of Ishmael and were brought back into the land, the response was to run to Egypt. And when they were challenged on that, these were their words. As for the words that you've spoken to us in the name of the Lord, we will not listen to you. But we will do everything that we have vowed and we will make offerings to the Queen of Heaven and pour out drink offerings to her. As we did both we and our fathers, our kings and our officials in the cities of Judah in the streets of Jerusalem. For then we had plenty of food and prospered and saw no disaster. But since we left off making offerings to the Queen of Heaven and pouring out drink offerings to her, we've lacked everything and have been consumed by the sword and by famine. And the women said, when we made offerings to the Queen of Heaven and poured out drink offerings to her, was it without our husband's approval that we made cakes for her, for her bearing her image and poured out drink offerings to her? Our Father, our King, we have joined with those falsehoods and we have declared them true. We have declared these false festivals as your will, whilst declaring your Moedim null and void. Through fear and jealousy, we have rejected your covenant and your word, and through wickedness and greed have sought to usurp, murder, and destroy your people, and cause them to convert from following you and following the words of your Torah to following a false Messiah, a false Jesus, and a false God, declaring your Torah null and void, declaring your Moedim null and void. We have put and created and nourished a root of bitterness and a root of falsehood. In this united kingdom that we live in, we have created disunity. We have not done the words of the writer of the book of Hebrews, striving for peace. We, the Gentile nations, we who've come out of, who've, who've, who've allowed ourselves to be part of this falsehood, we the Gentiles have declared, you finished with Israel, your people, but you, Father, have not. You, our King, have not. We the Gentiles have declared, all your covenant promises are ours and that Israel's privileges are forfeited, but you have not. We, the Gentiles, have believed the falsehood of the blood libels and encouraged the anti-Semitism against your people and declared, we are now the chosen. But you have not. 
we the Gentiles have declared your people Israel as responsible for putting Messiah to death, but you have not. You've declared by your word, whoever sheds the blood of man, by man shall shed his blood, uh, by man shall his blood, blood be shed, for God made him in his own image. On this day, as we remember your servant Gedaliah, who, who you placed as a light to the remnant of your people through your servant, the king of Babylon, we remember how Ishmael, through his bloodthirstiness, sought to not only destroy your servant Gedaliah, but those who were weak and distressed, who sought the comfort of your presence and the reassurance of your servant. We see how Ishmael put on the garments of Amalek and preyed upon the weak and the helpless in defence of your name. On this day, we remember how you spoke to your remnant who sought your face through your prophet Jeremiah and how they declared to you, let our plea for mercy come before you and that you would pray to the Lord your God for us, for all this remnant, because we are left but a few as your eyes see us, that the Lord your God may show us the way we should go and the thing we should do. And they declared... May the Lord be a true and faithful witness against us if we do not act according to all the word which the Lord your God sends to us by you. Whether it is good or bad, we will obey the voice of the Lord our God to whom we are sending you that it may be well with us when we obey the voice of the Lord our God. We have vowed the same vows and we have declared our obedience and made promises to follow you. We who declare our loyalty to you as king and your servants have declared the same. We have declared that Yeshua is the Messiah of Israel and the saviour of the Gentiles. We have declared that we stand with your people Israel and that we desire to see your kingdom purposes fulfilled. We have declared that even as we see the increase of the persecution of your people, both Jew and Gentile alike, that we are steadfast in our trust in you. And yet, in your word, through Yeshua, our Messiah, your King, who you place on the throne of David, through Yeshua, you have declared that you know our hearts. You desire us to repent. You desire us to lift up our weak hands and to strengthen our weak knees. And you say to us, I know your works. I know you are neither hot or cold. Would that you would either be hot or cold. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot or cold, I will spit to you out of my mouth. For I say, for you say, I am rich, I have prospered, and I need nothing, not realising that you are wretched, pitiable, poor, blind and naked. So I counsel you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may be rich and white garments so that you may clothe yourself and the shame of your nakedness may not be seen and to salve and salve to anoint your eyes so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So be zealous and repent. And as the books were opened, and the books of life and the books of death and the books of those in between. Yeshua, you have declared, are we hot or are we cold or are we in the book of the in-between? Our Father, our King, we come before you today, not because we're worthy, but because we're unworthy. We come before you today in this land that declares the seat 
of Anglicanism, the seat of the Protestant church, the seat of the church that declares by grace you are saved and yet has turned its face away from your people, has turned its face away from your land and has encouraged the worship of idols and has encouraged anti-Semitism and turning away from Torah. Father, we ask you forgiveness because we are not worthy. And that, Father, as the testing comes, as the testing comes, that you will help us to remember your words, the words that, the words that you, in response to your remnant, declared through your prophet Jeremiah. If you remain in this land, in this land where you think there is trouble, where there looks like disaster, then I will build you up and I will not pull you down. I will plant you and not pluck you up. For I relent, I repent of the disaster that I did to you. Do not fear the king of Babylon of whom you were afraid. Do not fear him, declares the Lord, for I am with you to save you and to deliver you from his hand. And I will grant you mercy that he have mercy on you and let you remain in your land. You desire us to return to you and to turn away from the false idols, to turn away from the falsehood and to declare you, Hashem, as our Lord and as our King and Yeshua as our Master and our Saviour and our, and our Redeemer. Our King, as we seek to encourage and assure others of your faithfulness, cause us not to be tempted as the leaders of your remnant were to seek refuge in Egypt, to seek refuge in the falsehood, just as you declared to, declared to them, if you say we will not remain in this land, despite disobeying the voice of the Lord your God, saying, no, we will go to the land of Egypt, where we shall not see war or hear the sound of the trumpet or be hungry for bread, and we will dwell there, then hear the word of the Lord, O remnant of Judah. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, if you set your faces to enter Egypt and go to live there, then the sword that you fear shall overtake you there in the land of Egypt, and the famine on which you are afraid shall close after you to Egypt, and there you shall die. Our Father, our King, we lift our hands to you in repentance. And we declare, we have said many things and we have declared our allegiance to you. But as the shaking comes, as our friends and loved ones around us die, as the world shakes and totters and moves around, we strengthen our hands and lift them to you. We strengthen our weak knees in these days of awe. And we say, Father, write us in the book of life and not just us, but those that we know to encourage that they would be written in the book of life. That on this Zon Gedalia, when a man was murdered for being righteous, that we would recognize that your Messiah was murdered for being righteous and replaced. And in that replacing, took many people into Egypt and allowed them to continue in their falsehood. Father, help us to remain in you. You have revealed to us a great truth through your Torah. You have revealed to us a great truth through your commandments. You have revealed to us in the Messianic community a love for your word. Let us not grow so confident that we take people into falsehood. But Father, help us to remain steadfast in the truth of who you are.
because it, again it says for it's impossible in the case of those who've once been enlightened who've tasted the heavenly gift and have shared in the holy spirit and, and tasted the goodness of the word of god and the powers of the age to come and then have fallen away to restore them again to repentance since they are crucifying once again the son of god to their own harm and holding him up to contempt Father, help us to remain steadfast because you have declared a covenant in the heavens, a covenant of comfort established by the sun and the moon and the stars. As it says in your word through the prophet Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah saying, thus says the Lord, if you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night so that day and night will not come at their appointed time, then also my covenant with David, my servant, may be broken so that he shall not have a son to reign on his throne. And my covenant with the Levitical priests, my ministers, as the host of heaven cannot be numbered and the sands of the sea cannot be measured, so I will multiply the offspring of David, my servant, and the Levitical priests who minister to me. Our Father, our King, in this land, in this united kingdom, we have created a priesthood that is false. We have established a church that declares your Torah is done away with, that your Levitical priesthood is done away with, that the throne of David is done away with. Forgive us, Father. Forgive us for adhering to that falsehood. We have taken the sign of your covenant. We have taken the sign of your covenant that you made with Noah, the sign of the rainbow, and we have turned it into something that declares something completely contrary to your will, completely contrary to your spirit, completely contrary to your word. When the flood came to destroy those who would ignore you and would take your name in vain father in your mercy you rescued a remnant and when the floods dissipated you said to your servant noah to your servant comfort behold i establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you and with every living creature that is with you the birds the livestock and every beast of the earth with you as many as came out of the ark for it is every it is for every beast of the earth i establish my covenant with you that never again shall all be flesh cut off shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth and yet we declare today that floods are going to destroy the earth, Father, contrary to your covenant. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my rainbow in the cloud. And we declare today in the world that that rainbow speaks of the mixture of flesh the mixture of gender, the acceptability of falsehood. But you declare that when we look in the sky and we see that rainbow, that you are declaring a covenant. It shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow is seen and the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I've established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. And Father, we thank you that on your Yom Teruah, on Rosh Hashanah, that is the day that the ark, the covering of the ark was removed. That was the day when you brought new life into being on this earth. That was the hope that you brought. That was the hope that Gedaliah was to bring to the remnant that were returning to Jerusalem. But Ishmael destroyed him. But your covenant still stands. 
You give us a choice, Father, to follow your covenant, to be the people that you've called to be, called us to be. You've set your king upon your throne in heaven, and your king is Messiah, Yeshua, the son of David. And you say, behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will establish a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not like the covenant that I made with their fathers on the day when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, for they did not continue in my covenant. So I showed no concern for them, declares the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my Torah into their minds and I will write the Torah on their hearts and I will be their God and they will be my people. And they shall not teach each one of his neighbor and each one his brother saying, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest. And to those who fear to those who would turn away, you say this, therefore, do not throw away your confidence, which has a great reward, for you have need of endurance, so that when you have done the will of God, you may receive what is promised for yet a little while, and the coming one will come and will not delay, but my righteous one shall live by faith, and if he shrinks back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who shrink back and are destroyed, but of those who have faith and persevere and preserve their souls. And Father, on this day, these days of awe, as we gather, as we declare these prayers before you, we say we will not shrink back because we want you to have pleasure in us. The days are coming when we need to and will need to declare the truth of who you are and we will not shrink back because you never change. You've declared through your prophet Amos, in that day, I will raise up the sukkah of David, the booth of David that is fallen and repair its breaches and raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in days of old. Father, you are doing that. We see that. We thank you for the work that you're doing through your Messianic community in Israel. We thank you for the work that you're doing in the Messianic community in the rest of the world and in the nations. And we thank you that you are doing that in the churches for those who recognize that the church has has lost it, has, has lost something. It's lost the true Yeshua, has lost the truth of who you are. You've declared through your prophet Isaiah, behold Zion, the city of your appointed feasts. Your eyes will see Jerusalem, an untroubled habitation, an immovable tent whose stakes will never be plucked up, nor will any of its cords be broken. But there the Lord in majesty will be for us a place of broad rivers and streams where no galley with oars can go, nor majestic ship can pass. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king, and he will save us. Your cords hang loose. They cannot hold the mast firm in its place or keep the sail spread out. But then prey and spoil and abundance will be divided. Even the lame will take the prey and no inhabitant will say, I am sick. The people who dwell there will be forgiven their iniquity. And Father, we ask that Jerusalem, that Israel would be a place that would say, we are no longer sick. We are no longer lame. That the mast is held taut and that our saviour and our king He reigns over us and we will see him return. And again in Isaiah, you say, enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out and do not hold back. Lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you will spread abroad to the right and to the left and your offspring will possess the nations and will and will people the desolate cities. Fear not, for you will not be ashamed. Be not confounded, for you will not be disgraced, for you will forget the shame of your youth and the reproach of your widowhood. You will remember no more, for your maker is your husband. The Lord of hosts is his name, and the Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer. 
the God of the whole earth, he is called. For the Lord has called you like a wife deserted and grieved in spirit, like a wife of youth when she is cast off, says your God. For a brief moment, only a brief moment, I deserted you. But with great compassion, I will gather you. In overflowing anger for a moment, I hid my face from you. But with everlasting love, I will have compassion on you. This is what the Lord, your Redeemer, says. This is like the days of Noah to me, as I swore that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth. So I have sworn that I will not be angry with you and will not rebuke you. For the mountains may depart and the hills may be removed. But my steadfast love shall not be far from you. And my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. O oh, afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, behold, I will set your stones in antimony and lay your foundations with sapphires. And I will make your pinnacles of agate, your gates of carbuncles and all your wall of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord and great shall be the pace of your children. In righteousness, you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression for you shall not fear and from terror for it shall not come near you. If anyone steer, stirs up strife, it is not from me. Whoever stirs up strife with you shall fall because of you. Behold, I have created the smith who blows the fires of coals and produces a weapon for its purpose. I've also created the ravager to destroy. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed and you shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their vindication from me, declares the Lord. We here in the United Kingdom have set our face against the Lord because we declare our church and our priesthood as righteous and as the one true church. And yet there is another true church that declares itself as the priesthood and as righteous and the one true church. And that is full of falsehood. And it has persecuted your people and it has shed their blood and it has cast them into the pit. But you, O Lord, you declare your people Israel your congregation and those who would join themselves and bind themselves to the Messiah, your people. We thank you, Father, for this day, for this remembrance on Zom Gedalia, that even in death you bring light and that you will turn this fast into a feast and that it will become a day of rejoicing because it will reflect the righteousness of our master, Yeshua, our Messiah, the one who rescues us from exile, the one who says today, stand with me, be with me. It's okay. You can remain under the regime of the king of Babylon. I will not pluck you up. You will be, you will grow. You will be safe. Let the nations around you rage. Let them declare that the waters are going to come over us and destroy us. But they will not. Because I have declared that they will not. That the mountains will fall, that the skies will fall on our heads. That the sun, moon and stars will disappear. But I have declared they will not. Let us declare now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us to him be the glory in the messianic community and in messiah yeshua throughout all generations forever and ever amen and amen thank you gary and uh, Luzba, are you with us? Yes, I am. Thank you.
Okay, I'm going to turn it over to you to continue in prayer. Heavenly Father, it is in deep gratitude that we come to you, who in your compassion, mercy, and love have revealed your Son to us. It was at the highest cost to Yeshua and to you that while we were far away and lost in our sin, you poured out your mercy on the cross to save us. Lord, we know that we don't deserve your compassion, love, and favor because you are holy and we are not. In you there is no lie and no darkness, but we were born in darkness and sin, as was each person that walked the earth. We praise you, Holy Lord, for your mercy and love, which has brought us into your family. Sovereign God, the whole world is in your hands, and yet the nations are raging, and the kings of the earth have taken their stance. In vain they are conspiring against you, and against Yeshua, but you have installed your king upon Zion, your holy mountain. How blessed are all those who take refuge in him. All the nations are subject to your sovereign rule, and you are calling people out of every nation, including those in the Middle East and North Africa. You are calling many into the same family to be brothers and sisters, citizens of the kingdom of Yeshua, your son, our high priest, redeemer and king, who will return and rule from his throne in Jerusalem as king of Israel and as king of the whole world. We praise you, Lord. Maranatha. Father, we repent to the extent that is in our power to do on behalf of the entities to which we have belonged and for the part that we've played in them in nations, in political parties, cultures, religions, and philosophies. We repent of placing barriers before the gospel, which is the good news of what Yeshua has done for humanity. We repent of adding your, to your word and creating traditions and images that distract from you and from what you've actually said. We repent of making idols. We repent of taking part of your word and focusing on them at the expense of the rest. And we repent of the part our nations have played in the persecution of the Jewish people. And we praise you, Lord, for their faithfulness in preserving your word over thousands of years. And we've benefited from that so much, Lord. Father God, empower us and all your people to seek your true word, untainted by human desire. Thank you for those who teach your word faithfully. Lord, raise more teachers who are committed to the absolute truth of your word and who will not flinch from teaching it. Thank you, Lord, for the remnant you have always had in Israel and that you are making the real Yeshua known to greater numbers among your people. Lord, we eagerly wait for the days when you will lift the veil that is hidden him from many Jewish people that he will be seen by his brothers and be recognized for he, who he truly is. Lord, we are excited for the days when, as your word promises, all Israel will be saved. So we pray, come, Lord Yeshua. Father, our heart goes out to Lebanon, Syria, Turkey, Egypt, and all of North Africa, where the early church grew and experienced persecution for the name of Yeshua and spread the gospel throughout the known world. We thank you for their witness and for their faithfulness. Father God, remember them, and in your mercy, reveal Yeshua to the people of these lands, the nominal Christians, Muslims, those of other faiths, to those who have been inoculated against you by religion and the teachings of men. And for your people who live in those countries, we pray for your wisdom and discernment, that they will be a powerful witness for your gospel, be glorified in them, Lord Jesus. We pray for those who are lost in hopelessness, that you will reveal Yeshua, the real hope and light of the world to them, that they would know him and be made whole in him. Lord, we pray for Iran. Thank you for calling so many Persian speakers into your kingdom. Thank you for the witness of our brothers and sisters who have laid down their lives 
for your name and today face persecution, prison, torture and exile. And there's such a powerful reach by many different voices into Iran via the internet, social media and satellite channels. And we pray, Lord, that you will grant wisdom and discernment to believers in Iran and in all lands to reject the things that are not of you. And help those who are in ministry to serve you and you alone. We pray for Afghanistan, as Afghan men, women and children who have lived in relative freedom for the last 20 years are plunged back into physical danger, we look to you, Lord, as your people in Afghanistan face abandonment by the world, we trust you because we know that you are sovereign and you will not abandon them. We pray that their witness will be faithful, that they will know your empowering presence at all times as they walk through the valley set before them. Be glorified, Lord, and lift it up among the people of Afghanistan and through them reach the nations around them. Thank you, Lord, that the church is growing in Turkey, even though it is growing slowly. We pray your blessing, direction, discernment and wisdom for Turkish believers. Father, protect them and be their provision. Lord, enable them to be a blessing to their neighbours and to bring many more into the knowledge of Yeshua. We pray for Iraq and Syria, for the Kurdish people, and for Lebanon, all facing a time of deepening crisis, where many people struggle for the very basic things to sustain them. Father, we ask for your mercy towards them. We pray, Lord, that you permanently cut off the enemy's influence in all these countries and throughout the world. And Father, as the darkness grows and as hope in earthly things fades, cause the light of Yeshua to shine and, tr and draw to him those who have lost hope. In these deceptive days, Lord, protect your people from deception and error and give them wisdom and discernment to know the times and to look to you. Father, grant the love of truth and a deep love for you and your word to all that it may outweigh people's tribal, national, and religious identities. Like Joseph, Lord, we trust that you will use what the enemy has designed for evil to save and to bring many into your glorious everlasting kingdom. So we pray, be glorified and lifted up, Lord Jesus. Maranatha. Abba Father, we ask all these things in and through the name of Yeshua. Amen. Thank you, Ruzba. And Dave Shear, are you with us? Yes, I am. Okay, I'm going to turn it over to you to continue leading us in prayer. Thank you. Father, thank you that I can join with my brothers on my side today to seek your face. Blessed are you, O oh Lord our God, God of our fathers, God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob great and mighty God, the Father of Yeshua HaMashiach, our Saviour, King of all Israel. I pray today, Father, to you who revealed yourself to Moses, to Moshe on the mountain after the sin of your people with a golden calf. We have sinned again and made a golden calf out of your very son, Yeshua. Father, because it is written, I can pray to you today in confidence of your love for me and for my fellow sins. It is written that you've revealed yourself as Adonai, Adonai, God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions of sins, by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and the fourth generation. Thank you, Father, for this opportunity to bow before you, before the throne of grace today, to seek forgiveness for my sin and the sin of my fellow servants against you, Abba Father, and against your beloved Son and our Saviour, Yeshua HaMashiach, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. O great and awesome God, who keeps covenant and mercy with those who love him and keep his commandments, I and my fellow servants have sinned most grievously. We have sinned against you. 
and committed iniquity and done wickedly and rebelled, departing from your precepts and judgments. We have not heeded your prophets. You said to turn us back. Father, righteousness belongs to you, but to us shame of first. We have marred and disfigured the face and visage and person of our very king, our saviour, our bridegroom. We have caused such distortion to his image that even his fellow Jewish brethren, the Jews have not been able to recognize him as their saviour and king. Not being able to believe the words first by Pilate on the tree on which he was crucified. Yeshua of Nazareth, King of the Jews. Father, forgive and restore and save through my own sin and the sin of my fellow servant believers and followers of the way. Many of your people have been scattered and lost and wounded and led astray. Father, we ask you, have mercy on them and call them back, Father. Redeem them, Father. Thank you that you are the good shepherd. Father, we have closed your Yeshua in the garb of a Gentile idolater and breaker of your holy Torah. The very Torah Judah has been so faithful to keep and suffer and die for through so many centuries, through so many generations, and their worship of you, their King and Savior. We have not recognized you to whom you have given the scepter until your, until your return. We have broken the Torah. You gave to him for us. We have resisted his guidance and even tried to lead him astray to follow other gods, to walk in another way as explained in Devani. We have not had a holy fear of you and your word. We have allowed your Torah to be torn, ripped apart, desecrated and corrupted. Thank you, Father, for your long suffering, your mercy and patience toward us. You haven't dealt with us according to our sins, but through the prayer of our Savior, of your Savior, Yeshua, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Praise you, O God, that you delight in repentance and are always ready to forgive. In your compassion, you forgive and heal and remove the curses and the sicknesses of Egypt that we have brought upon ourselves. Thank you, Father, for your discipline, which has taught us righteousness. Thank you, Father, for hiding us in the cleft of the rock to see the result of your work of salvation for all your people, both Jew and Gentile. I seek your face, Father, for my fellow servants, as I've been a member of the Roman Catholic Church, the Evangelical Alliance Mission, Baptist Union of Zimbabwe, the Evangelical Fellowship of Zimbabwe, the Elam Pentecostal Church, the Christian Ministries Fellowship International, the Fellowship of Independent Evangelical Churches. And in union with the Anglican Church, Church of England, the Presbyterian Church, the Methodist Church, and the Brethren, the Assemblies of God, and many other denominations, we have led your people to celebrate Babylonian idolatrous feasts of Christmas, Easter, and Sunday worship. Father, I pray. I pray for all of these folk and all of these denominations and organizations, Father, that you would bring revival and bring truth to their hearts. Father, I seek your face on their behalf. We have taught your people to leave their first love of the Passover. We have taught the doctrines of Balaam, being the love of money, eating food, sacrificed to idols, tolerating idolatry and sexual immorality. We have taught the doctrine of, Nic of the Nicolaitans to change Adonai's kingdom for the calendar, the calendars of Babylon, Egypt and Rome. We have allowed the spirit of Jezebel to teach your people to worship idols and commit sexual immorality. We have defiled our garments and brought shame to you, our God, and taught it was not necessary to keep your Torah to be sanctified, that your people were already rich and wealthy and had need of nothing. We have mixed yours, holy Torah, with the teachings of Baal and foreign gods of Egypt and Rome. We have taught your people it was acceptable to worship with obelisks and Asherah poles, false incense, and false spirits of sensual pleasure on every high hill. We have failed to teach the difference between profane humanism and the holy. 
We have not taught the difference between the clean and the unclean. We have put stumbling blocks before the blind, preventing them from seeing the path before them, obscuring the light of Torah and the lamp for the commandment. We have fed on the good pastures without feeding the hungry. We have pushed and shoved and butted with our horns to scatter the people throughout the earth. We have driven and beaten your people and made them pray to every beast of emotion, desire, appetite, and intellect. We have used fear and bribe to coerce your people. We have committed blasphemy against the mountains of Israel. We have profaned your holy name among the nations wherever we went. We have persecuted our brother Judah without pity. Through all these sins, we have put corrupted and blemished offerings that were unacceptable. We have done so in arrogance and pride. We have made the face of our King and Messiah unrecognizable and his name a stench in the nostrils of his beloved brethren. Father, have mercy. Hear our plea for forgiveness, Holy Father. We have rejected the law of Moses and have trampled the Son of God underfoot. Your Son, your beloved Son, We've counted the blood of the covenant by which we were sanctified. A common thing and insulted the spirit of grace. We, the Christian church, have betrayed our Messiah like Judas for 30 pieces of silver. We have rejected our first calling in our inheritance. Father, you have written in your Torah, vengeance belongs to you and you will bring recompense. You will bring justice. You will judge your people. Father, we thank you. You have written, you will have compassion on your servants. Father, have a, hear our cry for forgiveness. Have mercy, our King, our God, our Savior. Make your Torah blast, scatter all the lies, break the numbness of the deceit. Bring healing and restoration and righteousness. Deliver us, your people, Father. Heal, the, heal this plague in your people. Send your healing power as we bow before your throne. Ah, Yeshua, you promised if we should keep his commandments, you, our Father, would come. You would send another helper to manifest yourself to us and lead us into all truth that you would love us, your people. Make your home with us, that we would love one another as you loved us, that we would be one as you are one. He in you. He are Yeshua in us. You are Yeshua in us. You in him, Father. That, that we may be made perfect in one and that the world may know that you have sent him, that we may behold his glory. You have given him, for you loved him before the foundation of the world. Bring healing, Father. Restore true authority so that the Messiah is recognized Reverse the curse, O oh God. We pray, Father, you hear our cry for mercy. Maranatha, come, Adonai Yeshua, come. The Spirit and the Bride say, come. Blessed is he who comes in the name of our God. Adonai, come. Your bride has prepared her garments and is waiting for your presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Dave. And Mark, are you with us? Yes, I am. Wonderful. Well, I'm going to turn it over to you to, <clears throat> to bring this uh, as the last person who will be, be praying, and then I'll close when we're finished. Thank you. So, Mark, it's all yours. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, just like Daniel in Chapter 9, I want to begin with saying we make our confession to you. And we say, O oh Lord, the great and dreadful God who keeps the covenant and mercy to those that love you and to those who keep your commandments, we as a church have sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. We have rebelled, even by departing from your precepts and from your judgments. And I would like to begin for the sin of creating a false image or idolatry how uh, every Christian denomination in every country and culture 
has a different perspective of who you are. We have a Hispanic Jesus, an African Jesus, a Chinese Jesus, a Caucasian Jesus, wearing pink robes, holding Greek texts. It's no wonder the Jewish people don't recognize Yeshua at all, just as your servant Joseph was unrecognizable. Father, we need to remember that we are created in your image rather than trying to conform you into our image. God, we also want to repent for changing uh, your name as, as well as all the apostles, creating uh, them more in our own image. Yeshua becoming Jesus, Shaul becoming Paul, Yochanan becoming John, Yaakov becoming James. Father, we want to repent for uh, saying that uh, the the priesthood of uh, the Catholics or other denominations of priesthood has replaced the Levitical priesthood. Follow, uh, Father. Also, I, I want to repent uh, on behalf of the Church for following Greek philosophy rather than Torah and abandoning your Torah from the very beginning. For the early uh, church fathers rejecting your Torah as the moral base, and instead embracing the teachings of Socrates and Plato and Aristotle to determine what is right in their own eyes. We repent for kicking the apostle John out of the church along with the other Jews and kicking out any Gentiles who wanted them to stay as Diotrephes did. Father, I just uh, also, in standing in uh, for the church, want to repent for the demonic spirit that was presented by these early church fathers that even led up to the Holocaust, those teachings of Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, Tertullian, Constantine, Jerome, Chrysostom, Augustine, and Martin Luther, as well as all the others, who advised that the Torah scrolls should be burned along with the synagogues, and that Jewish houses be destroyed, that Jews would be forbidden to teach the Torah or from citing the new moon, that their assets should be stolen. For uh, during the Crusades, where all the Jews were rounded up and put at the synagogues and then burned alive while Christians are marching around singing, Christ, we adore you. Father, we just want to repent for uh, the whole last 2,000 years when there was no Israel. How the church assumed that they must be the ones to whom all those future promises to Israel refer to. Of course, they can keep the curses. And then, of course, all of a sudden, as your promises to the real Israel began to be fulfilled, and they reappeared on the scene and became a nation again, what was the church to do? Father, I repent that we did not rejoice that your children had returned to the land. We did not rejoice that these promises were being fulfilled but became jealous we did not embrace but we pushed aside father i can't help but think of the st louis the ship bringing uh, survivors uh, back to over to the united states and we shipped them back to europe to die father i also want to repent for the misinterpreting of scripture we ask forgiveness for all those times when we've read passages concerning your promises to the nation of Israel and to the Jewish people. And we have been thieves. We've stolen them and applied them only to the church, leaving only the curses to rest upon your people. Not only for misinterpreting the scripture, Father, but we repent for intentionally mistranslating scripture just as the media is biased and how they fabricate uh, things reported, just as history is written by the victor, we repent for our history of the intentional mistranslations into our own language by our forefathers that has created all these false concepts, uh, such as the separation of the church from the synagogue. 
Father, we want to repent for replacing the biblical calendar, not honoring the Sabbath, bringing in all the pagan holidays. Father, uh, I want to ask for repentance that the church isn't siding with Moses. When you were going to destroy your people in a moment, Moses pled with you, don't do it, don't do it. Because then the nations would say that you brought them out to kill them, that you didn't have the power to do it, or that you were a liar and you weren't able to do it. But Moses sided with you and said, oh, God, but then uh, they'll think you are a liar and you're impotent. And so he asked you to spare your people. This is what the church should have done. We should have done that. We, we, should, we need to let you know that we don't want to replace your people because we don't want you to appear to the nations as unable to fulfill your promises. Lord, we, we love you. And we just ask right now that the church would repent and they would again side with Moses and say, don't, don't leave your people. Don't forsake your people. And because of this, we want to think of what it says in Ezekiel chapter 36, where you are speaking to your people and you say that you're not going to do this for your sake, bring them back to the land, but you're going to do it for your holy name's sake, which was profaned among the nations, especially wherever Christian missionaries have went. Father, and uh, pulling people away from you, uh, your people, Israel, and from your Torah. So we ask and side with you that your name would be sanctified, that was profaned among all the places, and that the church would know that replacement theology is evil, so that you will again be sanctified in everyone's eyes, that the whole world would know that you exist. Father, that you are involved in what goes on in this earth and that you do have the power. So, Lord, I just pray that you would give all of your church, uh, all of the Christians, eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to understand what you're speaking to us in these prophetic days. We are living at the cusp of the curtain falling down uh, in history and the return of Yeshua, Hamashiach. So, Father, I pray that the church's eyes would be open, that they would repent of replacement theology, that they would run to you, that they would be intercessors. You've always been looking for people who would intercede. And, Father, may the church step up to the plate and intercede on behalf of your children, Israel. May revival take place like never before, Lord, that uh, everyone would turn to you with all of their heart, with all of their soul, with all of their strength. So, Father, we just thank you so much for this time of prayer, that we can all come together and we can repent for the sins of our forefathers and what they've done just as Daniel repented. Father, we know uh, we want to be as the children of Issachar and understand the times and what Israel ought to do, but also what the church ought to do in returning back to your biblical calendar. So we thank you for uh, all the leaders within uh, the Messianic movement that understand this, Father, that are trying to uh, restore all things, even as you said in Acts how Yeshua is not going to return until the restoration of all things. So we do pray for that restoration uh, on a scale, Lord, that uh, you would be pleased and you would return. We ask for you to return, Father, and bring the complete restoration to your millennial reign. And we ask this in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Mark. So appreciated. And thank you to everyone who's joined us today, this morning in Ohio, but I know it's afternoon or even evening in other places. As we close, I just, uh, a thought keeps going through my mind. 
that uh, I credit to uh, Messianic rabbi Yitzhak Shapira in Jerusalem. He wrote a, an amazing profound book last year called The Besorah According to COVID-19, not named for a book, but a profound book. And he answered a question for me that I've had for years. I've noticed that as I read through the Torah, that we always see the high priest being dressed by someone else. When the high priestly garments were, uh, were, were made, we see Moses putting the garments on Aaron. And yet it would have been no problem for Aaron to put them on himself, but it says Moses put them on Aaron. At the end of Aaron's life, they go up to the mountain and and uh, when Aaron dies, Moses then takes the high priestly garments and puts them on Aaron's son, Eliezer. And then they descend the mountain. And whenever the high priest would appear before the people, he would appear only dressed in the high priestly garments, the four linen garments and the four golden garments. And Shapira brings out an amazing insight. He says, our high priest, Yeshua, will only appear when we dress him in the appropriate garments. And as Mark Bilt has just said, we've clothed Yeshua in so many different ways, ways that people would never recognize. But I think the Messiah's return to a great degree is awaiting us. And I think today, our time of prayer, of repentance, asking God to forgive, the Gentile church for its mistreatment and misrepresentation of Messiah and its mistreatment and misunderstanding of the Jewish people. I think this has gone a long ways to begin to clothe Yeshua in his proper high priestly garments. And I think that when we have finished that, that maybe, just maybe, you'll realize he is now properly attired to appear before the world. So thank all of you again for your prayers, all of you who've joined in um, to listen and pray along with us. And I especially want to send out a, a special thank you to my dear friend and sister, Colleen Martin and George South Africa, who is the spark that God has used to um, inspire each of these three days of prayer, this being the third one. And also my good friend and brother, David Deacon here at Beth DeCoon, who's overseeing so much of the technical end of things, the engineering and, and the PowerPoint slides and so on. Thank you, David. Thank you, Colleen, so much. This is important work that you two have done for God's kingdom. So let's just close in prayer, dismiss you to go about your day. And I just want to thank you again for devoting your time to this important endeavor today. Our Father and our King, I thank you for these friends and brothers and sisters who have joined together today. We've stepped aside from all the busyness and the lure of the world to be still and just to appear before you, asking your forgiveness and asking your blessing and your restoration. We thank you for your chesed in the world. For without it, where would we be? So, Father, bless those who participated. And bless those who would have participated had they known. And, Lord, above all, bless your people, the children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. May they quickly and soon come to recognize Yeshua as their Messiah and Savior. And bless the Gentile believers that they may quickly and soon come to recognize that their savior is Jewish, that he's the king of Israel. And may their eyes be opened to your Torah, that they might know how to live out the redeemed life. And thank you, Father, that we live in a day where these things are happening. So hear our prayer. And above all, may you be blessed, our Father. May you be pleased, our King, that your children are coming together to beseech you, to look to you in repentance and to ask your forgiveness and to ask that your kingdom come 
and your will be done on earth, just as it is in heaven. And we ask this in the precious name of King Messiah. Amen.